Hello, and welcome to the Paranormal Operator Podcast, where we talk about all manner of things that go bump in the night. Here, we will be discussing sightings, investigations, news, and popular media surrounding the paranormal, supernatural, and occult phenomena. So settle in as we search for the truth. I'm your host, Adam, Operator 23. In today's episode, a dismissive UAP article from the New York Post, an update on the Texas cattle mutilations, where is the UFO center of the world, a Bigfoot sighting in Will County, Illinois, and an article from Harvard professor Avi Loeb. The New York Post article how science and politics are bringing an end to ufology is a little lackluster in my opinion. The thesis is that extraterrestrials do not exist and there is no evidence. Its main argument being that with all of our skies over the continuous United States monitored 24 hours a day, 7 days a week by the FAA and by NORAD and any host of everybody else, whoever is doing it, surely their radars would pick something up. Well, we know that that it's not entirely the case because these UAP, these UFO, they have been able to skirt around our technology. So that kind of shoots down their main argument. At any rate, as an investigator, I have stated that 99% of sightings are mundane. Most of the things I looked into were just bull eyes or uh, meteors. But there is that 1% of stuff which cannot be explained. It is it is anomalous. And I think that they're kind of missing that point. Now that being said, uh, there is in my opinion, a, an embarrassing amount of evidence that comes from all over the world, and it is abundantly clear that it exists to those who want to do more than a cursory glance. The one interesting thing within the article was a linked video, The UFO Lie, Shocking Truth of Pentagon OSAP Program from the Basement Office. It detailed investigatory journalism into the history of OSAP, ATIP, and Lou Elizondo. According to the video, OSAP was not a UFO program, but was a paranormal investigatory program that looked into Skinwalker Ranch. And they also bring up a little bit about Bigelow, but I, if I recall correctly, it doesn't say anything about NIDS which is kind of odd. It just brings up Bigelow Aerospace. Additionally, ATIP was a nickname for OSAP and never actually existed as an independent, funded program. Lou Elizondo, who was the supposed director of ATIP, apparently, according to documents released through FOIA, was no such thing. And he by his own admissions, may or may not have worked for OSAP. His story is a bit contradictory. I'll leave it at that and suggest that you go watch this video. It's about an hour long, but it's worth a watch. Now, many of you are probably aware of the recent cattle mutilations in Texas. Six cows were found along a stretch of Texas Highway, all of them in different fields, all of them from different herds. The cows had skin removed from their faces. They had their some of them, their tongues, their anuses, and genitalia removed. And on top of that, these mutilations were classically bloodless. So there was no blood spillage or on the ground or anywhere near it. The latest update that we have... Uh, is that there is a reward of $5,000 for any information in the case. Our last UFO article is about Japan. 
coming from the timesnownews.com. This article is entitled, This Tiny Town is Dubbed Home of Aliens, because it has had 452 UFO sightings this year alone. If you're ever in Japan, make sure to swing by, of all places, of course it would be, Fukushima. The town boasts a UFO lab and all manner of space paraphernalia, like supposed fragments of crashed spaceships and alien statues. Furthermore, there are a host of alien monuments and viewing towers for sky watching. Some locals say that the town is a hot spot due to its lack of lights and possible magnetic field. One may wonder if it is also that because of the meltdown which happened at the nuclear reactor. Because there is, as many people may know, there is a pretty strong correlation between alien or UFO activity and nuclear energy. Now for space weather. This from spaceweather.com. May 6, a coronal mass ejection, CME, hit Earth, which caused a G2 class geomagnetic storm and aurora. Over the past week, the sun has been very active. And in fact, there is another CME on the way. It is expected to impact Earth either May 7 or 8 causing mild to moderate geomagnetic storms. On the meteor front, this week, May 6 through 12, will not see much meteor activity, according to the American Meteor Society, due to the brightness of the moon. I will say, just as a, an extra note in here, that people have been seeing Starlink in the sky, and I have come across several um, news articles about that, from various places, make sure you double check what's above you uh, before you um, file a UFO report. Because you know, if you can debunk it, that's great. And then you know, an investigator doesn't have to waste time messing on messing with that uh, that ninety nine percent. On to cryptids. Today's report comes from Will County, Illinois, and was reported to the. Bigfoot Field Research Organization, BFRO. The sighting took place in a cornfield near McGuire Road. Two witnesses, ages 10 and 12, saw a Bigfoot standing in a ditch, either on January 21 or 22. It is of note that these ditches are many feet deep. A picture was taken but it resembles a bear, even though there are no bear to be known in that area. Additionally, there were no footprints found. Now, over the past years, activity has persisted at this location, including missing farm animals, sightings, wood knocks, howls, and something hitting the house. The reference number for this report is 75 Four five three, dated January 22, 2023. For those of you heading into the woods for recreation or investigation, always be prepared. Here are three tips to aid searchers if you lose someone or get lost yourself. First, take a picture of your other people the day of. This way, you will have a current photo and something that describes the clothing they are currently wearing. If you're going alone, which is not advisable, take a selfie and send it to someone. Also, let them know where you are and when you expect to return. Secondly, have a plan for if you get separated or lost, like a designated meetup spot and time. Know where the nearest roads and towns are, and their relative direction. It is best to have a map and or GPS. Lastly, if you're going with children, give them something with your name and number on it, like a business card, or, you know, it could just be an index card with that stuff written on it. Either way, something with your contact information. 
This works well in areas where there are people, but out in the bush, the best advice is for them to stop and wait to be found, lest they get even more lost. Dr. Avi Loeb of Harvard University and the Galileo Project wrote an article April 23rd entitled Our Survival in the Milky Way. The article talks about the chances of previous intelligent civilizations among the stars who have gone extinct. Likely, statistically, that number is very high. His argument is that if we are not careful, we too will go extinct if we do not humbly seek to expand our horizons. His main warnings are against gatekeeping science and basing current understandings on faulty math and measurements. He maintains that Oumuamua, the interstellar object that passed through our solar system a few years ago, was not a comet. This quote really gets to the heart of the article. Quote, From a global perspective, survival of the fittest favors rare civilizations that are seeking long-term prosperity through the infinite sum game of new knowledge instead of the zero-sum game of limited resources on their home planet. Now, our last segment, Upcoming Events. This past Wednesday, May 3rd, was National Paranormal Day. May 11th is... Twilight Zone Day. It is, if you've never seen it, please sit down with your friends and family. Watch the original Twilight Zone. Black and white. It is just, takes me back. Nostalgia, member berries, all that kind of stuff. May 11th, Twilight Zone Day. May 13 and 14, Paracon 3, Connecticut's first and original paranormal convention returns to an Asonia Armory, 10 North State Street, Ansonia, Connecticut. Doors open at 11 for general admission and 10 a.m. for VIP. The event will feature special guests, paranormal investigators, lecturers, authors, entertainment, and other special events. 60 great vendors, including psychics, card readers, mediums, horror memorabilia, clothing, crafts, book sales, movie merch, food trucks, and much more. For information, you can call 203-795-4737 or email to CT Para. Con, that's C-O-N-N, as in Connecticut, ctparacon at gmail.com. Tickets are available at paracon.ticketleap.com. May 19 and 20. Don't miss the third annual Western North Carolina Bigfoot Festival that celebrates the legendary creature. It covers several blocks of Main Street in downtown Marion, North Carolina, located about 36 miles east of Asheville. In addition to the Squatch-themed items, you will find a variety of local crafts, food vendors, and other interesting things. This year, they are adding an indoor expo on Friday. The Big Street Festival will be on Saturday. Parking is limited, so please check the website for shuttle information. And the website is romanticashville.com slash Bigfoot dash festival. May 21, set in beautiful Coshocton, Ohio, the third Sasquatch Triangle Conference, is excited to continue and educate and entertain in Sasquatch research. Speakers include Doug Waller, Amy Boo, Thomas Shea, and Charlie Raymond. Tickets are available on eventbrite.com. June 2 and 3 in Canton, Ohio is the Monster Fest presented by Small Town Monsters. There will be a movie premiere, amazing vendors, live podcast recordings, 
guest speakers, 17 guest speakers that is, including Lauren Coleman, Cliff Barackman, and Stan Gordon. Tickets are available at smalltownmonsters.com slash smtmonsterfest. June 16 and 18 in Asheville, North Carolina is the first annual Cosmic Summit featuring Randall Carlson among 14 other phenomenal speakers. Millions worldwide believe there is more to recent Earth and human history than recognized by our gatekeepers. The Cosmic Summit will tell the whole story best we can. The Herodox subjects addressed at the summit will include the well-published Younger Dryas Impact Event, more recent cosmic impacts, suspected precursor civilizations, Clovis people, the Black Mat, Gobe- Go- yeah. Gobekli Tepe, that's a mouthful sometimes, lost ancient technologies, controversial archaeology, megalithic monument building, Egyptian mysteries, and catastrophic ge- geology. Unfortunately, Graham Hancock and Jimmy Corsetti have dropped out of the conference, but on the bright side, uh, that does mean that in-person tickets may still be available. And uh, just as a warning, they're kind of expensive. Um, They're $571 after tax. Online tickets, however, are also available. You can stream it for just $49. You can get your tickets at howtube.com slash one four three six nine well that's all for this week folks if you like what you heard please like share subscribe comment helps out with the algorithms if you didn't like what you heard i thank you for listening this long please comment what you might want to hear what you might want to have done differently you can find us on twitter at paranormal ops 23 and instagram at Paranormal Operator 23. Our email, if you have any sightings or experiences you want to report, is paranormaloperator23 at gmail.com. Additionally, you can also find us now on Rumble. Until next time, folks, keep searching in the darkness.